Remember when I said I would upload weekly updates and then I just forgot? Well, today is Sunday and I actually remembered to film this. So yeah, this is Michelle's Melancholia, where we read books to fear and shed a tear. Let's talk about what I've been reading this week. And honestly, it's not as much as I would want to. I've been really overwhelmed at work. Honestly, it's just too much and too stressful. And I usually read in bed at the end of the day. And lately I can only get like five pages and then I just literally fall asleep on my Kindle. So I've been a little bit sad about that. Fortunately, audiobooks have been consistently saving the day. There are certain tasks that I can do at work while listening to something. And then of course I also have the commute and chores and all of that. And when listening to audiobooks, I try to go for stories that are easy to follow and entertaining. So this week I decided to focus on thrillers. And another thing is that I'm stingy and audiobooks are expensive. So I decided to pick from my local library's catalog. And I just picked three that looked good although I only managed to get through two and a half, but we'll talk about that. The first one I chose is Then She Was Gone by Lisa Jewell, and this was first published in 2017. And honestly, I picked this one for no particular reason other than the name Lisa Jewell sounded familiar. She is talked about a lot in booktube and other book-related social media, and I just hadn't read anything from her before, so I just picked this one from the catalog. The title sounds very generic. Clearly it is a disappearance mystery thriller and the cover as well is super boring <laughs> to be honest. Literally it's giving nothing but this was really good. So this is about a 15 year old girl who goes missing and her mother has spent the last 10 years obviously trying to deal with this. For a long time she was looking for her, but also lately she's had to decide whether she's just giving up and like trying to come to terms with the fact that her daughter may never come back. And also she has to deal not only with the fact that her daughter is missing, but also the change in her family dynamics, the relationship with her other children also suffered and her marriage also fell apart. And then one day she meets a man with whom she starts a relationship with and basically things happen that bring all the questions she had about her daughter's disappearance back to the surface and suddenly more clues start appearing and she is able to start putting some of the pieces together. And again, I know this description also sounds super generic just as the title and as the cover, but I promise that the story is actually exciting. I just can't say anything without spoiling and you really don't want to be spoiled for this one. I thought this was a really well-crafted mystery. The story makes sense, the characters have dimension and the way the main character, which is the mother, the way she thinks and acts, really makes sense for her and her circumstances and I just liked the way the past and the present scenes were interwoven to build the story in a way that was exciting and thrilling but also pretty logical. I don't know why there is this narrative around mystery thrillers where people are disappointed when the twist doesn't blow their mind and maybe I'm just wrong but I feel that if a twist completely blindsides you and you didn't see it coming at all, then does it really make sense? Or is it just a way for the author to feel that they were more clever than the reader? As I said, I may be completely wrong, but I much prefer a story where the reader can also put the pieces together little by little and they all lead to a logical conclusion and when everything is revealed in the end, you go like, yeah, that makes sense. I saw this coming. I mean, I'm not saying that it has to be too obvious, but you know, just things falling into place naturally. <laughs> and for me, this one had that balance really well. While still preserving a lot of the mystery, a little bit of misdirection even at some points. So yeah, in conclusion, this was 
completely unassuming but very very effective and I do recommend it and I gave this one four stars. I don't think I'll ever give a thriller five stars so again please leave your five star thriller recommendations below. I haven't read many thrillers at all so probably most of the things you will recommend I will not have read them so please go ahead. <laughs> the next thriller I chose is One of Us is Dead by Geneva Rose and this was first published in 2022 and this one was definitely a mystery but I didn't find it to be very thrilling at all. I wouldn't call it a thriller at all. I would just say it's a mystery and a pretty cozy one at that. I mean the stakes are high because someone does die and there are some dark things that happen but most of it it's just like gossip. Let me explain. <laughs> this is about a group of very rich women who are friends or kind of like frenemies I guess and they all go to this beauty salon so the owner of this beauty salon knows them very well and obviously knows a lot of their secrets because she's just like always there listening you know and we know right from the beginning that one of these women ends up dead but we don't know who killed her or how or why and throughout the story we just get different perspectives from each of these women as well as from the salon owner that lead to the murder. And this one I gave three stars because it's just an okay book. It was entertaining for the most part, although it dragged a little bit, you know, there's only so much I can read about the exact same kind of gossip. And I know that the author meant to portray these rich women as shallow, but they came across as too shallow and I think it's more that the characters were a bit underdeveloped and just relying on their more cartoonish characteristics of the mean rich girl. The ending was pretty good. I would say maybe the last 15% of the book I quite enjoyed but I would completely understand if someone was too bored to continue say around the halfway point. But this one's definitely a more light-hearted read. I don't know, in my opinion even a little bit of a comedy with murder, like a comedic murder mystery. So if that's your kind of thing you might enjoy this one. But if you're more of like the dark thriller kind of person I would recommend Then She Was Gone better for you. And the last book I picked is Girl A by Abigail Dean which was first published in 2021 and this was labeled as a mystery thriller as well but I'd honestly say that it's just contemporary fiction and it's just about crime but it, there's no mystery and there's also nothing particularly thrilling about it. It's actually pretty depressing and this is about a girl who along with her multiple siblings suffered quite extreme abuse from their parents and she escaped and this led to the rescue of all her other siblings as well and now they are all grown up and for several reasons she's starting to reconnect with all of her siblings and what I found saddest about this book is that I've read about a lot of real life cases that have a lot of similarities with these so even though this is completely fictional it made me feel like I was reading more like a true crime documentary or a memoir and I haven't finished this one I'm about halfway through or 60% but even at some points I feel bad like I'm intruding in these girls privacy and like I'm just eavesdropping on her talking about her trauma. The pacing of this one is very slow but I haven't found it boring. As I said I just feel this morbid curiosity to keep hearing about what she and her siblings went through and I guess in some way it also includes a bit of commentary about how survivors of this type of abuse that usually get like a lot of press and attention have to deal with basically for the rest of their lives uh, sometimes. As far as the audiobook goes this one is not as easy to follow because even though the narrator is always this girl she talks about a lot of characters. 
She, of course, talks about all of her siblings, but also her parents and just a lot of people involved in this story, so it can get a little bit confusing at times, especially because she jumps around the timeline all the time. So she'll be talking about the present where she's reconnecting with the siblings, but obviously then she goes to speak to one of them and then they're talking about the past and it just keeps jumping around. So that's why I've been going slower with this one because sometimes I have to like rewind a little bit to know where we are um, in the series of events. But as I said, I'm never bored because I guess I'm just nosy and I want to know. I think that this would definitely appeal to people who enjoy true crime because it really has that feel of exploring a real life event, but it's not real, it's fiction. So I guess you can just learn about all the sordid details guilt-free. <laughs> Anyways, I think for now this one is a 3.5 stars, maybe a 4, depending on how it ends and how the story wraps up. But if something comes up that I think is interesting to talk about, I'll just revisit this in a future video. So that is all for now. February is going by so fast and as I said, I'm a little bit frustrated because I just haven't had time to get to the books that I really want to. So I need to prioritize. I really want to read Katie by Michael McDowell this month and I have the audiobook for that. So I think as soon as I finish with Girl A, I will just listen to Katie on audiobook. I've listened to Michael McDowell's books on audio before and I've loved them all, so I don't think that will be a problem. I also really want to get to The Cabin at the End of the World by Paul Tremblay. That is Criminalist Patreon book club pick. And obviously I want to read that book before watching the movie. I also have it on audio, but I would prefer to read that physically. So we'll see. I'll think about it <laughs> next week. And I also really want to get to The Child Thief by Brom because that is part of my 12 books recommended by 12 friends list and it will be also a way for me to participate in Kat's Folklore February. And finally, I think around the 26th, I will receive episode 13 by Craig DeLouis, which is for Amy Noel's Dark Hearts Book Club, but also it's one of my five-star prediction new releases for this year, so I really want to read it before the month ends. So wish me luck, because I really want to read all of these books. Anyways, please do leave me a comment with your thriller recommendations or let me know if you have read any of the books I talked about tonight and I'll see you on my next video. Goodbye!